Okay, so today we're going to be creating one of the tougher parts um, in one of our first Revolve lessons uh, my students learn in here, which is this piece here, Exercise Problem 6. It doesn't have a name, but it kind of looks like a thimble or something like that. Um, and this is a much easier part than it looks um, because you can really make this with, let's see, one, two, probably three features if you consider the pattern right here as uh, one feature. Um, or we can actually make that with a full revolve, which is probably how we'll do it. All right, so the first thing I need to do, set my working directory. All right, wherever you like to save your stuff, you should be doing this anytime you go into Creo. So my students like to work in a nice CAD folder here. All right, and then I'm gonna start my part. And for this part in particular, you can name it whatever you like, but my students will be naming it MS0903. So this is a grade nine project. And this will be exercise number four. So MS0903-4, and then I'm gonna hit OK. And the first thing I need to do is create this outside sketch. Now it's kind of hidden in there, but I can make the majority of this object in just one sketch, all right? And you can't really see it, but if I was to maybe take some lines and highlight this, it kind of goes down like this. And then there's another line that goes, whoop, accidentally clicked it. Maybe I can draw it. Well, that'd be a lot more valuable. Let's try drawing it. It goes down like this, and then in, and then over, and then down. And over, you can see my phenomenal drawing here. We'll be happy to teach lessons afterwards. And that's kind of my first section there, making a point to make this line vertical. I didn't draw it too, too well. Okay. So that's the section I'm making to begin with here. Now let me go ahead and delete that so it doesn't hang out later. All right, but that's the section I'm making. So I'm going to go into a revolve. I'm going to go to placement. I'm going to go to define. And there's shorter ways to do this. This is just to teach the the most um, most frequent way people learn it. But I can also what I like to do is I go in and I hold right click define internal sketch. Then I'm going to draw on the front plane. And I'm going to hit sketch. Now if your view doesn't rotate. Just hit this little box right up here, sketch view. You'll be looking right at it perpendicularly. Now, anytime you make a revolve, you need to think about where the axis is. Now, this round part rotates around a center axis that goes up and down through the middle here. So I'm going to create a center line. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to move down. I'm going to click again. And now it's hard to see, but I have a center line there. I know it's there because I can see a collinear constraint. Then I'm going to make that shape I just drew. So it goes up, over, slants up, then goes straight up, making sure that V shows up for vertical. Then goes over to the right, and I'm drawing this kind of extreme. If I get an L, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click, and that'll kind of turn off that L because I don't want things to be equal lengths because a lot of lines are very close to the same length. So again, I have an L again, right click, and then left click. And then I'm going to come down. I do want those to be parallel, so I'm not going to right-click to get rid of those. But if I was to right-click, you can see it turns them off, right? Down, click, and then back to where I started. And then I can either hit this arrow, or if I middle-click two times, it'll show me where my solid shape is. Now, this is very important, and this is a good handy trick for your first feature. By default, Creo's model spaces are huge like 200 inches um, in every direction. This thing is obviously not 200 inches. So what I like to do is make all the dimensions that they give me, and then I'll size them down afterwards. So I have one from the center to here, a little short one there, there. This goes down, one here, and then I have a height. So let me put those in. Dimension, so from here over to here, middle click. Then I have 
from here to here. I, would, I have no idea why they dimensioned it this way, but this is what they gave us to work with. And then I have a height here. Okay, and you can see my equal links from earlier is already unhappy, so I'm going to delete that. Then I'm also going to go ahead, click that one, and delete it too. Thought I got them, but I guess I didn't uh, right click correctly. And then I'm going to go from that bottom line up to here, and then middle click. And then the last one they're giving me here goes from here to here, and then middle click. Now, if I look at this object, one thing they're giving me, again, not a way that I would be making this thing. I would definitely not draw this as a shape and then add thickness to it. But that's what they're giving us here. So they're saying anywhere I'm missing dimensions, it's 0.75 thick. So right here and right here. So what I'll do to solve that is I'll add a dimension in here for that 0.75. I'll add one in between these two lines. And middle click. And then this one up here, I see what the issue is, is that I need to make a horizontal constraint right up here between this line and this line. And that'll line those right up. Now, here's why I didn't change these dimensions. If I change a dimension to the right number right now, so for example, this is 7. Who knows what the heck I'm looking at now? You'd have to be a pretty darn good Creo user to figure that one out. So what I like to do is draw a big window around everything, making sure I'm on my arrow here. If you're in the dimension command still, just middle click. You see how it jumps over to my arrow, because middle click is basically like the escape key um, from a program like AutoCAD. And I can draw a big window around here, hold right click, go to modify. This is usually only something you have to do on the first feature, by the way. Then I'm going to lock the scale, and I'm going to change one of the dimensions to what I know it is. So if I click on this one up here, you can see it lights up this one. And I know that that's 5 from my drawing earlier. So 5, enter. Everything shrinks, makes you a little nervous. That's okay. Just change one and hit OK. Now my, my sketch saves shape. Not all these dimensions are right, but they're a heck of a lot closer. So this one up here is 0.5. This one right here is 1. This one here is 7. Starting to get something that looks a little closer to what they had. This one down here is 4. And this one, as we talked about earlier, is 0.75. And this one here as well is 0.75. Okay. Now I can hit the checkbox. And I get this shape. Now I do want to add in, I could make those circles in that shape as well, but I'm going to separate them out because I think it'll be a little easier for my students to understand um, for now. But if, you, if I was modeling this piece, then I would certainly put them all in the same sketch. So I'm going to hit the checkbox, and there's my shape from earlier. Now I need to add another Revolve. Right click, Define Sketch. I'm going to be on the front again. And I'm going to sketch. And again, if it doesn't rotate, click this Sketch View button. Now, I need to add these circular cutouts here. Here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold right click, and I'm going to select References. And I'm going to add this outside edge as a reference. Then what I'm going to do, and you know what? I don't even know if they give me, yes they do. They do give me a radius. So I can see all these are dimension from the bottom. And they have a radius of 0.25. So just to make it easier to see, if I switch my shading to no hidden, I can see my edge a little better. And now I'm going to put in a circle. And I'm going to move up and put in another circle. And then if I go to around the same size, I get an R to let me know those circles are the same radii. And then I'm going to make sure I don't get that M there. I don't want that. And then I, again, same radii. So all these are the same. So if I change the radius of 1, so now I'm going to add in the dimensions I need. So dimension, I know they're mostly here, but it's good practice to put them in. So from the center to there is one of them. From the center to this bottom is another. Click, click, middle click, there's the other. And then right now I have a diameter. Since these are just going to be a radius, 
um, just half of a circle, I'm going to put them in as a radius. So if I click the edge just once and middle click, that'll give me a radius. If I was to click it twice and middle click, it would give me a diameter, but I'm not going to do that. So this is 0.25. This is 1. This is 2. This is 3. And now, if I hit my checkbox and I turn my shading back on, it looks like nothing happened. But if I go up to the top and I say, you know what, this thing's a cut. I want to remove material. Oh, you know what? I missed a very major thing. That's why it's not working. I completely forgot to put my center line in, which means now I need to add a reference, add that center line as a reference, and then add a center line in. So that's my bad, because I didn't know what axis it wanted it on. Okay. And since I did it this way, if you ever want to change what center lines your axis of revolution, click the line, hold right click, designate axis of revolution. Okay. And it says it's best actress, axis. It's best practice to use a geometry center line. Yep, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to hit checkbox. And now look at that. There's my cuts that I was looking for earlier. I'll hit the checkbox. That'll put that in. Now I'm just missing a hole at the bottom and a few radii. So I'm going to put a hole in. To make a coaxial hole, I'm going to pick my axis. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to pick my surface. That's where I want to drill it. Then I'm going to go all the way through with my depth. And this hole has a diameter of 0.75. Hit the checkbox. All right. And then all I'm missing is a few radii. So it says a radius of 0.25. It looks like if I zoom in here, here, and then in the corner down bottom there. So I'm going to go around. And then this part's really important. I'm going to pick this edge. I'm going to hold control. Very important to hold control because then it's going to put them all under the same set. If I don't hold control, it adds a new set, which is an issue later on because i got to change all of them at once. So we'll put a radii there, I think. It looks rounded. And one there as well. And then we'll change these to be 0.25. And we'll hit our checkbox. And there's our final part. So now I can just save my part. And I'm done.